Jayhawks. Let's focus on Chris Beard's Longhorns for a second. Um, they lost 64-51 at Oklahoma State. Now, Trey Mitchell didn't make the trip, third leading scorer, third leading rebounder, but still, Longhorns were favored to win this game, even without Trey Mitchell. Um, and then they lose it. And this is an Oklahoma State team that's got some talent, but had already lost four times at home this season. And so then Texas goes there and loses by double digits. You know, in the preseason, after all the additions, uh, Marcus Carr, Trey Mitchell, uh, on down the line, most people seem to think that Texas would either be great or at least good. Right now, I'm not sure they're either. You still believe in this team, or are you uh, starting to grow skeptical that the Longhorns are able, will ever um, be the team that a lot of people thought they'd be in the preseason? Well, you may recall that in the preseason, I was vocally skeptical on this notion that Texas deserved to have a top five preseason ranking based purely on it's Chris Beard. He's been a really, really good coach at Texas Tech. He's going to go to Texas where the fit couldn't be more perfect, bringing all these transfers and it's going to click and this should be a top five team. I never bought into that. In fact, I think I remember talking on one of our preseason episodes, be it the Big 12 specific one or another one where I even didn't like myself for caving to groupthink and I put Texas in my preseason top 10, but even then still wasn't comfortable with it. And if I wind up being wrong about that and wrong here, come back and find me uh, as always there. But I thought that Texas was more set up, more practically set up this season to be a tournament team, an interesting team, a good team in the Big 12, but not in the top tier of the sport. Now, it looks like that at the moment. If you look at the resume overall, it's just a little bit inconsistent. Maybe this team will just need a little bit more time. I remember when I went to the um, when I went to the Gonzaga Texas game at the start of the season, and Gonzaga just rolled them. Uh, ESPN's friend Frischilla called that game, and so we sat in uh, on a little bit of Gonzaga and Texas practices. And I remember Frischilla saying uh, that this team looks like it's going to be one that's much more well-rounded and uh, and full to form by the time we got to February. And that's often what you'll hear in the preseason with a lot of a lot of teams. But uh, he kind of laid out his reasons as to why. And I remember thinking yeah, there probably could be something to that because I wasn't sure how dangerous they'd be right off the bat. Then they go out and they just get, uh, you know, completely sideswiped by Gonzaga to start the season. And what was a really tough test? I mean, that was a tough ask. Chris Beard even said this was a house money situation there. But yeah, I, d I don't necessarily think that Texas is going to be in the mix to win the Big 12 this season. And I, that's not unreasonable <laughs> like first season under Chris Beard and he tried to make it work with a bunch of different kind of transfers they're still going to be dangerous I still think this I don't know where they're going to land GP on what seed line if they're a five if they're a three if they're a seven but let's just say they're a five you know if they're a five I they, they can get past the 12 handle a four and then I could see a situation where sweet 16 they're playing a one in the regional semi and yeah it's like a nightmare situation you wouldn't want to face Texas probably in that kind of spot so I could still see this coming around in March and being a pretty cool story but reliability over the next eight weeks for Texas to be a team that's you know maintaining top 10 status in the AP top 25 I I'm, I'm highly skeptical that's going to be the case yeah Texas is now 0 and 3 in quad one opportunities the losses to you mentioned Gonzaga the other Seton Hall now Oklahoma State best win if you just look at it go well they beat West Virginia, but West Virginia was missing multiple players, including Taz Sherman. That's the best win. Nine of the 12 wins for Texas um, are against sub-200 Kempom teams. So there's not a lot there right now. And it was another disappointing performance um, this weekend for Marcus Carr. He had been playing better, had uh, scored a total of 39 points in the previous two games. And this one just won a six from the field, four points, three turnovers in 36 minutes. Um, you know, a bit of a step back after a couple of encouraging performances. So Texas out of the top 25 and one 